Hey guys, it's Postbox Pat. Welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video, we're talking about Fortnite Season 4. Now, Fortnite Season 4 is a little bit away. We know that September 17th is the end date for Chapter 3, Season 3, but Season 4 is literally around the corner, and that's why I want to talk about it, because it's going to be Marvel. Most definitely, it will be Marvel, and or at least superhero themed, similar to Chapter 1, Season 4, and Chapter 2, Season 4, which was Marvel. And obviously, Wolverine today was added in. We'll play with Wolverine in the background during Toy War, put some gameplay of him on. Not the best gameplay. I haven't played Fortnite fully actually playing it, other than building and fixing bugs and creative. I haven't actually played it properly for a while, so my aim's going to be pretty bad, but I thought I'd showcase the new skin, just because I know you guys want to see it, and it is obviously tied to the Zero War. So, Fortnite Zero War comics are currently out, and we're going to talk about Modoc in a set. He is in the thumbnail, so we'll get to that in a second. But the Zero War comics end on the 28th of September, and that is during the first, or first week basically release of or just into the second week of the season four release and there's a reason why the final one probably releases and there's at least a month gap between four and five you can see here because we can expect that it's probably going to tie in to season four of the comics most likely and modok is possibly going to be the villain boss that we get it's not 100 percent confirmed but Donald Mustard did mention it, and this is what he said. Now, there is an entire podcast over on Marvel's side if you want to watch it. It's about an hour long of Donald just talking about the metaverse and Marvel and Fortnite and stuff like that. It's kind of interesting, all the collaborations and stuff. It's an interesting podcast. I listened to it a very long time ago, so I haven't listened to it recently, but I do have some of the stuff wrote down that I did take notes from that podcast. And these were the words that Donald used himself. He said, Modoc is amazing. If Modoc learned that there was a slice of reality where Fortnite exists and you don't have enough context yet, and the players don't have enough context yet for what's going on in the world of Fortnite. So, yeah, if Modoc learned there was a slice of reality where it exists in Fortnite, he'd probably turn on, and he basically says that we don't have enough context as listeners of the podcast during this time. We do now, and as players, we don't either. But now we know how powerful the Zero Point is. We saw what happened with Galactus, We because bear in mind, this podcast was during the Galactus stuff before the event had even taken place. So... This is really interesting. And he also goes and says, I think Modoc will be very interested in what's going on there. And maybe there's a way he plays into that. And that's basically what he said in the podcast. Basically hinting that Modoc would be a perfect villain for the Fortnite universe. And it could, could make sense for season four. Now, would the entire season be Marvel themed? I think we would see mythics. I think we would see skins. Would they be main Marvel skins? Probably not. I don't think they'd be reskins of Iron Man. And we've already got a lot of skins. Like, I don't think you see, like, Cap reskins or Iron Man reskins. I think you'd see new Marvel skins, as well as some Fortnite skins as well in the Battle Pass. I don't think the entire Battle Pass would be Marvel-themed. There's probably not enough characters for it that would bring tons of sales. But there's probably enough there to kind of mix and match. And that's where Fortnite themselves will probably, you know, they'll probably look at it and think, we can tie this in with our own characters in the comics, as well as some of the Marvel characters, which is kind of neat. So... What else do we have to confirm more details on this? Well, if you look at Modoc as a character, this is a weird one. I think you guys will like this little Easter egg. So, do you guys remember the AIM skin? It's called A.I.M. Well, in the Marvel Universe, that stands for Advanced Idea Mechanics. You see it in the Iron Man 3 film. If you guys have watched that, the Iron Man film, you'll remember Advanced Mechanics is like kind of uh, Advanced Idea Mechanics, which is kind of like the main kind of structure to Stony, Tony Stark's robot mechanics in that film. But Modoc himself is also, this is not part of the MCU, not part of the film series, but part of the comics. He's an advanced idea mechanic system, and obviously M-O-D-O-K. Uh, so pretty cool, Modoc, and AIM could link to him. I don't know, imagine, imagine if AIM was here for Modoc to spy. Possibly not, but just a little point I thought I'd make kind of like a little easter egg but yeah modok himself what does he do what powers does he have how is he going to perform in the funny universe well basically modok is a walking or floating piece of head floating head with a small arm small legs and really uh really good technology mindset modok himself wears this crazy headband that enables him to focus in with mental power guys it's pretty awesome which allows him to create a devastating laser beam he also has psychic abilities which possibly allow him to kind of teleport to places maybe and be a little bit telepathic and also mentally control different people or even large groups and he can even generate a force field which is strong enough to withstand crazy explosions so he has quite a good few abilities there's probably other stuff i've missed as well i don't know much about modok myself this is just from doing research but 
from what I've read there from basic research, he would generally fit quite well into the Fortnite world. And some people even call him AIM. Some people call him the headman. Uh, the headmen. People call him different stuff. You know, these are the kind of the team affiliation stuff that he's related to. So possibly, you know, could be Modoc at some set, some point in time. But what does Modoc actually stand for itself? It's kind of a weird name and one that you probably wouldn't really think of. But it basically stands for uh, Mental Mobile Mechanism Mechanized Organism Designed Only for Killing. That's basically what it stands for. So it's some sort of robot program to eliminate people, which is kind of neat. So I'm looking forward to it. I do expect Modoc would make a really good villain. Now I'm just going to summarize this section up because I just spent nine minutes talking about it. And I thought I could summarize this a lot easier. So we're basically talking about where is Fortnite going next in the future with Season 4. And will it live up to the original Season 4s? So Fortnite Season 4 of Chapter 2 was my favorite season ever in Fortnite. And I've played since the alpha stage when you had to pay for Fortnite during Save the World. So that was my favorite ever season. But will it live up to that? I think if it's Marvel themed... Yes, and if it innovates enough, yes. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, recently Fortnite's been introducing a lot of collaborations and doing nothing with them, other than putting skins in the game, or maybe a little creative map. Creative isn't enough to innovate the game to bring new players in. Creative's built by people like me and you, and we create experiences for people to play, similar to the Toy War experience here. Having a collaboration in creative is cool for smaller brand collaborations like, say, Blenciaga, even though Blenciaga is not a small brand at all, but in the terms of, like, a, I guess, a gaming point of view, I would say that Blenciaga isn't really that big in the gaming space, so it makes kind of sense. Like, I wouldn't want to see a Blenciaga boss, so creative map works. Naruto, however, you know, that collab was pretty big. I'm not a huge, I, I've never watched it, so I, I don't know much about it. But the Mythic was good, the NPCs were good, the creative maps were amazing, but weren't really where things were at. Like, they should have just added the POI into the map, they should have just added a boss. Two huge missed points, and then they reintroduced the next second club for that, and also didn't do anything other than... The creative maps were awesome, but they didn't do enough. And I don't think the creative maps are good enough for this sort of stuff, they need to do more. They did challenges online, that's not good either. Challenges online, like, people aren't... Why did why did we do why did he even do that? Why didn't he just do it in game? Why did he do them online? You have to sign up. I don't know. But that's that. Uh, innovation is crucial for season four to be successful. This leads back to the topic of mythic items, bosses, unique areas, unique POIs, unique stuff. Look at the original season four. This is the reason it was my favorite season. We had so many mythics being introduced, being drip fed into the game over throughout that entire period. We had Iron Man's mythic, Wolverine's mythic, Doom's mythic. We had also pick up ones like Groot, Thor, She Hulk, all these different mythics. And then you look at even the map changes at the start of the season in the first like few days we already had POIs landing into the ground Wolverine's truck that he was uh, captured in we had also Stark Industries later on in that week and before that we had Ant-Man's house and a few others as well I can't remember 100% uh, the collector's room I think from the uh, where the collector I think you guys know who that is the, you know the collector I don't really know how to explain him anymore but he collects stuff from Marvel you'll know who he is if you're a Marvel fan uh, but yeah we had his little room drop in and just that was straight away Things were booming. We had Black Panther's POI also drop in as well. So many cool stuff. These were so many areas that Fortnite could have created really awesome stuff. And then we had the duo to tournaments where you could compete with a duo partner in the Marvel Mythic Battles where you could win skins. That was amazing. I did a creator one of these. Sadly, I didn't have a duo, like a consistent duo for the cups that we practiced. I wish I did to win the skins, but I just bought them anyway at that point. I guess I had to because I couldn't uh, win them. I didn't have a duo partner, but I won in the... Other, the competitive the competitive one with the uh, content creators, me and Littlewood came like 4th or 5th, we did quite well, we won around $3,000, it's the only time I've ever won anything in competitive, but yeah, it was pretty awesome. So, what I'm trying to say is they need to do more stuff like this with Season 4, like the same sort of cups, and just in general with skin collaborations. For example, Gamora and Starlord, which released some random time in Chapter 2, I think, they could have had a, their own cup where it used unique modes. 
You know, not just simple duos, simple squads, unique stuff. They could have made Starlord have a consistent jetpack with endless fuel but less HP and dual pistols. They could have made Gamora have more HP, fast movement speed, maybe some low gravity settings that could be turned on and off and also have the ability to pick at people that do with a medium range set to it that does a lot of damage and maybe like a pistol or something, which would be really neat. You would have like 400 or maybe 600 health style would have like 250, 300. Also, loot that you can pick up around the map, like healables, impulses, shockwaves. Tournament duos, go for it. Imagine how cool that would be to innovate. That would bring players from the Marvel Universe to play in it. Even if they had it as like an LTM for a bit, it would also bring a lot of other players into the game to try it out. If it's a limited time mode where you can actually play as them characters. It introduces the characters more of a, like a... Kind of gives them a little bit of life in the game rather than just a cosmetic skin. I think like that's quite crucial with these cosmetics as well. They've got to bring more to the life of collabs. And that's what I'm hoping for in Season 4. Not just with the Battle Pass items and what's in the season. But with other clubs beyond Season 4 from now on. Fortnite is releasing more clubs than normal skins at this rate. And it does look like that currently. So I'm hoping we do see some more innovation on that side. Anyway, that's it for today's video. That's everything summed up there. I summed up quite a lot there in a short period of time. Originally it took me forever. But I hope you guys have enjoyed. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And once again, this is Postbox Pat.